Good morning and welcome to Friendship Alliance Church. My name is Jason. I'm the pastor here. We're going to get started with the message in just a moment, but first we want to share with you a couple different ways that you can connect with us. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Listed below here, you'll see our website. There you'll see updates, as well as ways to do your tithe and offering by clicking on the giving link. We also have an active prayer chain. If you want to be involved in that prayer chain, there will be a link in the video description. Uh, a couple of other different ways that you can uh, connect with us is through our friendship family page that you'll see on our Facebook page. If you go on, on our Facebook page, click on groups and click friendship family. This is an open format. This is a platform for you to kind of share what's going on in your life, to share what God is doing in your life. And so if you want to be involved in that, just uh, click on friendship family and be a part of our, our online church group. Uh, also, we started. Uh, we announced a couple weeks ago the start of a campaign that's going to be taking place September 1st called Whatever Works. And we're going to use the month of September to do good works in our community, whatever that might look like. We want to look for opportunities to serve. And so we're teaming up with a couple other churches. And, and the tricky part in doing this in 2020 is that we're not going to be doing this as a large gathering of a group of people. It's individuals taking it upon themselves to find works, to do good works, whatever that may be. So if you want to be involved in that, you don't have to be a, uh, you don't have to live here in the Methow Valley to be a part of it, wherever you are listening from this from, uh, you can be involved with it as well. And uh, give us, shoot us an email, uh, let us know, send us a message on Facebook if you want to be involved with this. Uh, if it's something that maybe your church would want to be involved with, let them know too. We want to get as many people involved as we can to do good works so that it glorifies God. So if you want to be involved with that, just uh, give us a shout and uh, we'll connect with you. Uh, we're going to get into the message now. We're going to continue our, our roller coaster series. We hope that you are blessed by it, and may God bless you. All right, here we are, Friendship Alliance Church, week two of our series called Roller Coasters. But I want to I want to start things off a little different with you this morning. What I want to do is share a story from this past week that really struck a chord with me. I was talking to one of the higher ups in our in our field office and we we're having a you know friendly conversation and I, I asked him the the simple question of how are you doing? And there was this long pause. And I, I thought I got cut off because that happens here in the valley. <laughs> you lose a call kind of easily. But there wasn't. He didn't I didn't lose him. And then all of a sudden there was this even longer sigh. It was just this <sighs> and then he answered me I'm growing. It's been stressful. It's been challenging. It's been good. And I'm growing. And that just really, that I could really relate to that. And maybe you're watching this and you can relate to that as well. Let me share with you James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 before we get started here. Consider it pure joy, brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So, so how can a season of life be both challenging and good? Well, because growth is taking place for many of us. Perseverance is, is doing its work. God can and, and will use a, a tough season of life to help you, to help you grow, to, to strengthen you, to remind you of your source of, of hope and strength and peace and perseverance that is found in him. Perseverance is doing its work, church. Amen. Let's, let's celebrate what God is doing. It, it's, been, it's been stressful for some. It's been challenging. But you know what? There's growth that is taking place. And because of that, we're good because the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. So here we are. Uh, another week of talking about roller coasters. I got my Cedar Point shirt on again. This is an old school one going back in the day. So for, the, for those of you who are watching from Ohio or have gone to Cedar Point, if any of you remember the, the slogan, the amazement park, if you remember that, throw that up in the chat. Um, today we're looking at another coaster. Last week we looked at Valraven. And we looked at 
look uh, how to move forward in, in a world that is trying to instill fear. How do we keep moving forward? And so if you didn't get a chance to watch last week or if that sounds like something that could speak to your heart, be sure to check it, check it out on our YouTube channel, Facebook, our website, so on. Uh, but today we're looking at a new coaster. It's really an older coaster. Uh, we're looking at a ride called the Magnum XL 200. That's right, the Magnum XL 200. That's a cool name, right? And this ride goes back to 1989. And uh, I saw a rumor on the internet that the Magnum got its name from Magnum PI, which was like a big show in the 80s. And uh, I, I don't believe that. I, I don't. Don't believe everything you should read on the internet. It could be, but I don't believe it. It's just a cool sounding name, the Magnum XL 200. And when it was built in 1989, Cedar Point, it had been 10 years since Cedar Point had built a, a big coaster. And so with the Magnum, they wanted to build something. They wanted something big. They wanted something that was going to make a statement. They wanted something that was going to make some noise, put them on the map and say, hey, this is us. This is Cedar Point. And that's exactly what the Magnum did. When the Magnum opened, it was the world's tallest, fastest, and steepest roller coaster on earth. There was nothing bigger, nothing faster, nothing steeper. It was the world's first hyper coaster. A hyper coaster is, is a coaster that is 200 feet or more. And over four, the, this ride has given rides to over 40 million riders. That's, that's incredible. There's so many people that have rode this ride. And, and this ride has a has a special place in my heart because it was the uh, it was my dad's favorite ride. So he would always, whenever we go to Cedar Point, he would always ride this ride. It was his favorite. And even though the ride is still 30 years old, it is still considered one of the top 25 roller coasters in the world. It's, it's still a legendary ride. It, it's considered a, a roller coaster landmark. It, it, it even has a historical landmark next to it. I mean, it is a legendary ride. The ride is said to have started the coaster wars. Everyone trying to build something bigger, faster, and taller. All the ride builders like, look at this. We got to build something like that. We got to build something bigger, taller. We got we to gotta think bigger. The Magnum is a trendsetter. Uh, the Magnum set the standard for, for roller coasters. It challenged ride designers everywhere to think bigger, to think more creatively. And that's where this message is going to take us this morning, to look at being a trendsetter, to look at setting a standard, thinking larger, thinking more creatively, with most importantly, with Jesus being at the center and him receiving all the glory. Amen? So with that being said, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. That's where we're going to be in God's Word today. Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16. So looking at Matthew 5, starting in verse 13 through 16, Jesus says this, You are salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except for it to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and, and gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you, Lord, for your God-breathed word. We, we thank you. It is an honor to be salt and light as you are describing us here in Matthew chapter 5. And I pray that, that your word would guide us and equip us into that truth, that we would live that out to all of those around us. Uh, we ask, Lord, that we would be blessed by your word this morning. May we be challenged, convicted, uh, to live out everything that you have called us to live out. And it is in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So the first thing that we're going to look at is salt. That you are salt. Like, make it per Like, point to yourself. Like, I am salt. You are salt. Going back, you are the salt of the earth, Jesus says, but if salt loses its saltiness, how could it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except for to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Now, now before I get into one of my, my favorite descriptions that, that Jesus gives his followers, salt, I, I find Jesus calling us salt to be one of the more fascinating descriptions that he gives his followers. 
Let, let me talk first about saltiness. Strictly speaking, uh, salt cannot lose its saltiness. Sodium chloride is a stable compound. I bet you didn't think you were going to get a science lesson here, but hear me out. Salt cannot lose its flavor, it cannot lose its effectiveness, but, however, during this time where, where this was located, where uh, Jesus was preaching, the, the salt that was common around the Dead Sea area was also contaminated. It had uh, many minerals, gypsum, other materials, and, uh, and that salt may have given a, a flat kind of taste and ineffective as a preservative, and we'll get into that here in a moment. But those mineral salts, the ones that were contaminated, the ones that were diluted with other minerals in it, they were useful for little more than, than just throwing on the ground for footpaths to, to, to free up from vegetation. As Christians, being salt of the earth, because, because of our faith, we cannot lose our saltiness. No, no more than salt can cease to be salt. However, Salt can be diluted, right? It can be contaminated. If you are cooking and something is too salty, you don't add more salt, do you? You know, you add more other, you add other ingredients to try to dilute it, to make it less impactful, to make it less salty. In, in the same way that salt can be diluted and less impactful, so too can we as Christians with, with our witness. When, when we become deluded, when we become contaminated by, by the world, consumed by the world, chasing uh, the, the world, and deluded by the things of it. Th this will make our saltiness less effective, less impactful. And this is why Jesus is warning his disciples. He's saying, look, uh, you know, you are salt of the earth, but, but don't, don't let the world contaminate. Don't let, it, don't let, you be don't let yourself be deluded. All the temptations around can, can, can do that. Now, now the Magnum, going back to roller coasters now, the Magnum, it, it's not the biggest ride in the world anymore. It's not the fastest coaster. It's not the steepest. It's not any of those things anymore. But you know what the ride still is, though? The ride is still salty. I wrote it a couple weeks ago. The ride, it is. The ride is still salty. Even after 30 years, which is old by, by roller coaster standards, the Magnum is still salty. It still has some flavor to it. It's still a rush. It's still an enjoyable ride. The views off the shore are just amazing. It's, it's a little jerkier than I remember, though. I, I, it kind of tosses you around a little bit. I, I ended up getting off the ride. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm a little sore after that. And my, my son said the same thing. And a uh, little jerkier than I remember. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or because the ride's getting older. Probably, probably a little bit of both, actually. But, but it's still, it's got some flavor to it, though. And you know what else it does? It still preserves the nature, the, the character, the identity of Cedar Point. Like, look, there's the roller coaster park. It's got that ride there. It's, it's got all these roller coasters. The Magnum preserves the identity of Cedar Point. It preserves it as America's rock and roller coast, as they like to call themselves. It preserves that identity. Look, there's the place with all the roller coasters. It doesn't matter how old or how young you are in your faith. If your faith is in Christ Jesus, you are salt of the earth. You are. And Jesus wants us to take our roles as salt seriously. As salt of the earth, we, we want to have an effective ministry, don't we, that glorifies God, both as a preservative and as a flavorful, as salt is. And we're, we're going to break this down a little bit. First, we're going to talk about salt as a preservative and how we are to be salt of the earth. Now, now keep your place in Matthew, but, but also turn to Psalm 145, verses 1 through 7. We're going to go back to Matthew, but Psalm 145, verses 1 through 7. So, so quite often, and, and salt was most used as a preservative back in the time of Jesus here. They didn't have uh, refrigerators. They didn't have freezers. They, they didn't have delivery or DiGiorno, right? They didn't have any way to, to freeze their food. So they had to get creative in how they, they slowed down the decay of food. So they would, they would rub salt into the meat as a preservative to, to slow down its decay. The Magnum, once again, it preserves the identity of Cedar Point. Like there's the roller coaster park. 
And, and, and the Magnum, in my opinion, is still, it's still a must ride. It's not the biggest anymore, it's not the fastest anymore, but when I go, I wanna ride it. I think it's still a must ride. It, like I said, it sits near the shore. The, the view going up is beautiful. It has this rich history. I mean, it really started it all. And, and it, got to, it got me thinking as I was writing this and I was preparing this, I got to thinking about the Magnum, is that there, there have been four generations of my family that have rode this ride. That, I, th I thought that was kind of neat. Like my, my grandmother, my dad, myself, my kids, like four generations of, of suitors have been on the Magnum XL 200. So, so look with me now in Psalm 145. Dave, David's going to say something here. And I, what I want you to do is look at these verses through the eyes of, of salt and, and, and the, the preserving nature of that message that, that David is giving here. Look with me in Psalm 145. Uh, we're we're going to look at verses 3 through 7. 3 through 7. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. I really want you to get verse four here. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. There are some preserving statements about Christ there, about God, right? About commending to telling the next generation. Pe people are still drawn to the Magnum. It, it, it's a landmark. They, they take their kids, they take their grandkids. And if you have a, a really cool, you know, great grandma or great grandpa, you might have five generations on it. But through us, through us being salt, uh, people are, are to be drawn to God, just the way people are drawn to, to go to Cedar Point, drawn to the Magnum. People are to be drawn to the Lord but through us being salt of the earth, preserved for eternal life. I mean, listen to David again, Dad, telling the next generation, one generation commend your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. You are a preserving agent because you carry the gospel. You carry the message of Jesus Christ, and we are empowered by his Holy Spirit to do it. We carry around with us the, the only name given to mankind by which we must be saved. There is a preserving element to that message, amen, that eternal life can be found only in him. And I believe that, that being, salt, being salt to the world around us in 2020 is so very important. I believe that, that we as Christians, while not denying the, the, some of the hardships and the struggles of the present, need to speak some life into the roller coaster that we are on right now. We need to speak some life into it. I mean, listen again to how David cries out, the, just the preserving nature of what he's saying, how he's going to tell everyone the awesomeness of God. One generation commends your works to another. They speak of your glorious splendor. They tell of your awesome works. They celebrate your abundant goodness. I will proclaim your great deeds. I will joyfully sing of your righteousness. There, there is a preserving nature in what we are called to do and who we are called to be as being salt of the earth. Amen? Amen. So there's a preservative nature of salt, but then there's also a, a flavorful nature of salt. Now, once again, salt as a preservative was the most common use for salt during this time in Matthew chapter 5. But as we all know, there, there's another quality of salt, and that is flavor. That is flavor. That nothing, nothing about God or his kingdom is bland, is it? There's nothing about it that's bland. And, and since we are salt and light to the world, we are not designed, we're not created to be bland to the world around us. There's nothing bland about what we have in Christ, amen? I mean, listen to, listen to these statements here. Listen to some of these verses that I'm about to share. And I, I'm gonna try to say I'm bland, and, it, and it's gonna be so hard, but, but just hear me out here. Just play along with me for a minute. I, I got to keep a straight face. I can't even do this bland. Okay, here we go. I've been saved by grace through Christ Jesus. I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, 
whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Like, that was so hard to do, like to try to be bland about those statements. There's nothing bland about God's word. There's nothing bland about his truth. There's so, there should be some excitement. There should be some flavor in our lives because of those truths, right? I have been saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. There should be some joy in our salvation. There should be some flavor. Like, I'm not saying that you need a bullhorn and start doing cartwheels all over the neighborhood. I mean, you do you, but but there should be some flavor, right? There should be some excitement about what we have in Christ, that, that we are more than conquerors. Just wrap your head around that for a minute. There, there should be some excitement in that truth, that we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. And that, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish. We just let John, 16, John 3, 16 just roll off our tongues. Really think about that, that we should not perish. We should, we should not perish, but have everlasting life. That, that's his love for us. That's his love for the world. That's what he offers in his son. And there should be some flavor. There should be some excitement in that truth and knowing where our salvation is, knowing the joy of our salvation. Amen? Amen. Da David says this in Psalm 34, verse 8. He says, taste and see that the Lord is bland. No, he doesn't say that. Don't, don't, don't turn me off. He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. He is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him, he says, that we, our lives should show that the Lord is good. It, our lives should show that, that there, is, there is something that just doesn't make sense that we have, right? There, there, is, some, there is some joy that they have despite their circumstances. The, the, the joy of the Lord is their strength right, right now in this roller coaster of, uh, of a year that we're having. The, the joy of the Lord is their strength. There is something good that is going on with them that just doesn't make sense with the vibe of the rest of the world, right? Our, our lives' flavor should, should lead others to our Savior. Let, let me say that again. Our lives' flavor should lead others to our Savior. We want others to take refuge in him because he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. He, he is the, a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Let, let that last one sit in for a second in 2020. He is our prince of peace. What, what if people looking at Christianity from the outside looking in can see some flavor that we have about Christ being our prince of peace right now? Look, we, we all know. We all know that, that the roller coaster of life is tough sometimes. It is. We talked about that last week. There's no getting around it. We are all on a roller coaster. We're all going to have ups and downs, highs and lows, twists and turns. So, so with that truth and, and with us being salt of the earth and having some flavor, here's, here's what I want you to do. Here's what, I wanna, here's what I want to encourage you to do. Don't fake the flavor. Don't fake the flavor. Don't. Remember my, my introduction this morning when I talked about the, the gentleman from the, the field office, one of the higher ups. He didn't say, oh, life is great. Everything is perfect. Like, oh my goodness. Like, I just can't believe how perfect everything is right now. No, he didn't say that. He said with a big sigh, oh, I'm growing. It's been stressful. It's been challenging. It's been good and I'm growing. That, that right there, that was inspiring to me to hear him say that. This is someone else who I look up to and, and he presented his, his roller coaster with some genuine flavor. Sh showing people our, our ups and downs, our highs and lows, showing people our, our genuine flavor is not a sign of weakness and it, isn't, it doesn't show the world that God isn't good. God is good. It shows everyone that we as Christians are going to experience roller coasters just like the rest of the world. We're all going to experience it. But, but we have a refuge in the Lord. The Lord is our, is our peace when life is giving us twists and turns. Look, life is going to be challenging. It is challenging. It is, and it is going to be stressful at times. But you know what else it is? It's good. 
It's good. We, we can experience that growth, right, that we talked about earlier. Because the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen, church? The world is longing, longing for genuine flavor. They don't want anything fake. Generation Z. Generation Z is anyone born between 1995 and 2015. And they have been declared by by many as the first post-Christian generation in America. So so when you think about that and you think back to when we were looking at Psalm 145, there's something missing here, right? There's a break in the chain that we're supposed to to speak into the next generation, tell tell them of the wonderful works of Christ, tell them about his awesomeness and how amazing he is. There's something missing there, right? There's something missing in that preserving nature that we've been called to do. There's something missing in that flavor that we're supposed to share to the world around us. Now, going back to Generation Z, they they can't remember a time without the internet. Generation Z, they can't remember a time without cell phones. They can't remember that many of them can't even remember a time without Facebook or Twitter. Like, oh man, that sounds really good, doesn't it? They don't remember a time without Facebook and Twitter. Oh, those days, those good old days, right? But since they are such a a digital generation, they, they are bombarded with ads, They are bombarded with people trying to sell them something all the time. Do do you know what Generation Z is looking more at for Christianity more than any other thing? What they're looking for in a church, what they're looking for in a Christ follower? They're, They're not looking for a church that has all these great programs. They're not looking at a church that has the best music. They're not looking at a church that has the the best, the most articulate pastor, which is probably good because I'm not really articulate. I'm just used by God. But here's what they're looking for. They're looking for something genuine. That is what they say they want. They don't want to be sold something else. They're they're sold stuff all the time. They get ads all the time. They want to see some genuine flavor. That's what they want to see. That's what they, they don't want to hear that things are all sunshine and rainbows for Christ followers because it's not. It's not. They want to hear about your roller coaster. They want to hear your genuine story. They want to see and experience your genuine flavor. Now, I never miss the, the opportunity to, to share my favorite verses in all of Scripture, and that's Colossians chapter 4, verses 5 through 6. And Paul says this, Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. May your conversations always be full of grace. And listen to this, seasoned with salt so that you will know how to answer everyone. That, that's the goal. That, that people that are looking at the church, that are looking at Christianity from the outside looking in, that they will see something that is genuine. That we are wise in the way we act towards people that are looking at Christianity from the outside looking in. That we make the most of those opportunities with them. That we have conversations with them that are full of grace. Like, let that sink in for a second. That are full of grace. That are seasoned with salt. That, we're, that, we're, that we are that preserving agent for Christ. That we have some flavor, some excitement about the joy of our salvation. We want to make the most of those opportunities. Amen? Amen. You are salt. You are a preserving agent that carries around a life-changing gospel. You carry around with them. You carry around with you the name given under mankind, the only name given under mankind by which we must be saved. You are salt. Let us live out that, that character of being salt to the world. Amen? Amen. Now, we're also told that we are light to the world. We are light to the world. The Magnum, when it came out, it, it set the standard for, for roller coasters everywhere. When the ride opened at it, it, Cedar Point, their attendance blew through the roof. It crushed all of their attendance records. Everyone from everywhere, they wanted to ride the Magnum. They wanted to see it. They wanted to experience it. They wanted to ride it. When it first came out, you had to wait sometimes over four hours just to get on the ride. I, and, you, and when you were driving up to Cedar Point, you couldn't miss it. It, it just towered over everything else. I mean, you could even see it from across the lake. You could see it right across from Lake Erie. You could see it from everywhere. This ride just towered over everything back in 1989. And there was just something about where you just saw it. You had to experience it. It was like this light that you were drawn to. 
Now going back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, Jesus tells us this, that you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. And I want to tell you, for those that are watching, like this is how God sees you. He sees you as a, a light to the world so that his salvation can reach the ends of the earth. That, that is the potential that he sees in your light. That is how bright he thinks your light can shine, that it can reach to the ends of the earth. Listen, listen to what is said here in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. The Lord says this, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation might reach the ends of the earth. That's amazing, isn't it? God doesn't think the, the potential of your light is small. He thinks your light has the potential of reaching the, the rest of the world the, to the ends of the earth. Isaiah 49 reminds us of this truth. God is saying, look, I, I don't want you to be a, a light just, just here. I want you to be a light here and to the ends of the earth. And, and I think sometimes that, that we get stuck in this mindset, oh, I don't, I don't know what my light can do. I don't know if my light can reach many people. You know, I, I just don't know that potential. Look, I, I'm not saying that you ought to think more highly of yourself than you ought, but don't downplay the, the impact that, that your light can make. Don't downplay the impact that you can, that you can be a light to the world. Amen? Not only, not only are you a light to the world, Jesus says, but, but in Matthew here, there, there's, there's an elevated nature to that light, isn't there? He's, he says this, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Your, your light cannot be hidden. Like, I, I love... Uh, I love riding the Magnum at night. I love riding all the roller coasters at night. Like the view is gorgeous off the shore. You can catch the sunset. Uh, uh, they, they light up the, the tracks, so like that light up on the hill of the Magnum. I'll put a picture of it here. But you can see the lights going up it. It looks so cool at night. And you can see from miles and miles away. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Now, now many ancient cities were, were built on hills. So their, their lights could be visible on the horizon at night from miles and miles away. Just like those coasters, you can see from far, far away, you can see these towns built upon the hill. You can see their light on the horizon. Now, I'm, I'm probably using one too many metaphors here, but just, just bear with me for a second, okay? How, how ridiculous would it be if a lighthouse was lit at its base instead of at its peak? Like, wouldn't that be ridiculous? That would be absurd, right? Sure, it would, it would provide some light, but, but the ships then, and the sailors that, that needed to see it off in the distance, they wouldn't be able to see it, right? There, there's this elevated nature to this light that we are given. Now, now, this light that we are given, it is not so that we look down upon the world or wag our finger and say, shame on you. It is that we can show the world that, that it's so that the world can taste and see that the Lord is good, just like David said. That, that the God is good, has, he is love, he is rich in mercy and grace. He provides salvation for all of those who call upon his name. We want our light to shine to the world, to give that message of salvation, that, 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 that Jesus is the only way. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says this, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of of life. We have this light and it is life and it provides life eternal for all those who put their faith and trust in Jesus. And we have been called to be a light of the world, to point to Jesus who is the light of the world. Amen. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you are a, a light, a light that has been elevated. Now, what does light do? Well, we know what light does, right? It, it illuminates. It shines through the darkness it, to, to brighten its surroundings. It serves to assist in direction to, to those around them. So, so we have been called more than just to be a light. But my next point here is we have been called to, to give light. That's what we've been called to do, to give light. So the Magnum, it took about a year to construct. It cost over $8 million to, to build. 
And I remember when it was getting built, I was only 10 at the time, but I still remember it was, there was build up, there was excitement. Like, look, they're building the, the biggest roller coaster in the world and it's right here in Sandusky, Ohio. Like there was all this excitement. Uh, I'll put a link in the uh, in the video description. They made a commercial, Cedar Point made a commercial advertising the Magnum back in 1989. It's this cheesy 80s commercial, I love it. But, but can you imagine, after $8 million, after all the construction that took a year, can you imagine if they didn't open it to the public? That sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Well, what if the ride designers came back and said, look, we just wanted to see if we could build it. We, we have no intention of letting riders on. We just wanted to see if we could build a roller coaster that's over 200 feet. I mean, this sounds absurd, doesn't it? It makes no sense. Do, do you know what else doesn't make any sense? Is that if we cover up the light that we have in Christ, we have been called to give light. We have been called to be more than just a light. We have been called to give light. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 says this, For you were once in darkness, we were all once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live, live, say that with me, live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. We, we see the fruit of, of what happens when we, when we give light. It shows other God's, God's goodness, God's righteousness, God's truth. And there is a world right now that is getting tossed around by the roller coaster of life that desperately needs to see the goodness, the righteousness, and the truth of God. And that's what our light brings. I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about a version of the truth that you found on some sketchy website that you shared to other people, that you probably got a virus that isn't COVID-19, right? I'm talking about sharing the truth. And that's what our light brings. It brings God's perfect truth, his perfect goodness, his perfect righteousness. That's what it brings. May, may we guard ourselves from illuminating lesser things. It's so easy to get caught up right now in illuminating lesser things, but let, our, let us give light to show people God's goodness, his righteousness, and truth. It is one thing to know that we are a light. It is another thing to, to give light. And we wanna give that light for the glory of God, amen? Which leads me to my last point here. Give the glory away. Verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus has called us to be salt and light to the earth, uh, to the world. And, and by giving us those identifying marks, like you are light of the world, you are salt of the earth. But just hearing those things, it might puff up your ego a little bit, right? Having, having our good deeds seen could tempt us to say, look at me, look what, look what I've done. But, but we are called to, to be salt, to, to be light. We are called to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. We've been called to be all of these things so that God gets the glory. We are to give the glory away. It is never, this light was never meant to be a spotlight on us. It was always to point people to God. And that is what our Whatever Works campaign is all about. And that's why we're so excited to, to, to do these good works so that we're not seen, but that God is glorified. And we're going to have fun with it. We're going to celebrate what God is doing. We're going to tally up all the hours and celebrate. Look what God has done. Look at how he was glorified through these good works. We, are, we want to do good works. We want to be salt and light to the world so that God gets 100% of the glory. I don't want 1% of the glory. I want God to get 100% of the glory. Amen? And, and once again, if, if you want to be involved in that campaign, join us. Join us. You don't have to live here in the Methow Valley to get involved with our Whatever Works campaign. It, wherever you are, you can get involved. You can be the hands and feet of Jesus wherever you are. If you want to get involved, shoot us an email, send us a message, get in touch with us. We want, to, we want to join with you in this. We want to celebrate what God is doing. We want to join together and give God all the glory. Amen? We were created by God to be salt, to be light, and we were designed for good works. Amen? And we were to do that all to give God 
all the glory. Let's do that together, amen? Let's give God all the glory. Would you join me as we close out in prayer this morning? Jesus, we thank you for this time. And once again, it is an honor to be salt and light to the earth. These are, these are huge roles that you have given us, Father. Help us to not take that for granted and help us to not downplay the importance that, that, that we have in all of this and, and pointing people to you, to leading people to you, to, to, to show people that there's life, a life eternal to be found in you alone, Father. Lord, I, I, I pray that we would carry that out, that we would take our role seriously as salt and light to make you known, to, to share your good word, to, to show the world that our, that our joy and our confidence isn't based on our circumstances, but it is based on you and what you are doing. Lord, it has been challenging and it has been stressful, but you know what, we're still good because you're good and your mercy endures forever. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. I, I love you, Friendship Alliance Church. Thank you so much for, for tuning in and being a part of this. Uh, we want to encourage you, if you are blessed by this, please share, like, and subscribe to our church's content. We want to get the word out to a, a as wide of an audience as we can so that we can give God all the glory. Amen. So please like, share, subscribe. Uh, we're going to see you back here next week. We're going to do another roller coaster. May God bless you throughout the week and uh, go out there and be salt and light to the world wherever you are. God bless you and uh, we'll see you back here soon.